If you hear about a NASCAR movie, what comes to your mind? For many, it's Talladega Nights. Maybe for younger viewers, it might be Cars or even Cars 3. Maybe you're a little older, so it's Days of Thunder then. Or maybe you're ancient and it's Six Pack or Last American Hero. Maybe you like the bad ones, so there's three or the start of one of the 60 Final Destination films. But I'm pretty sure the 1997 made-for-TV film Steel Chariots wasn't the one that you had really thought first. But more on that right after this. This video is presented by Pristine Auction. Pristine Auction is the most trusted sports memorabilia auction site out there with an a triple B rating. Auctions at pristineauction.com start at just a buck and every day there are thousands of signed items available so you'll win signed authentic items at affordable prices. Every item on pristineauction.com comes with a certificate of authenticity from the industry's most reputable authenticators. Deals like this are happening all the time on pristineauction.com and they are your one-stop shop for NASCAR memorabilia, collectibles, and so much more. Upgrade your collection of signed memorabilia today and get $10 off your first item one when you use code ICEBERG. They've also supplied me with a giveaway for you all. They'll be giving away a signed Dale Jr. mini helmet. At the conclusion of this video, jump on over to pristineauction.com forward slash register. And for a chance to win, all you got to do is sign up on their website using my registration code ICEBERG to be entered. Thank you once again to Pristine Auction for your support of this channel. And now, back to the show. In the late 1990s, the NASCAR world was clearly different from today. At the time, it was the fastest growing sport in America, and everybody wanted a piece of the expanding pie. One of those that was a hungry pursuer was that of Fox. At the time, races were on CBS, ABC, ESPN, TBS, and TNN. But with an upcoming negotiation for the NASCAR rights deal, they needed to better position themselves in just about every way. An early part of this was the TV movie Steel Chariots. And the description of this movie on IMDb is both intriguing in a dumb way and also just plain stupid. It stated, set in the world of NASCAR racing, a family racing team is in danger of being ripped apart by the rivalry between two brothers tempted by fame, money, and beautiful women. Now, let me just tell you, the beautiful women temptation is the biggest part of all three of these. The movie opens right in the heat of the action of an NASCAR race. Up front, Dale Earnhardt and Jeff Gordon are going at each other. In fifth, is the main character driver, DJ Tucker. What's funny about this scene is that in one race, they're at Charlotte, Daytona, Talladega, and Texas all at once. But with the caution, he comes down pit road to, holy shit, is that Randy Travis? Nice and straight. Remember you're holding the wrench, son, but the good Lord's holding your hand. Oh my God, it's gonna be one of these movies. This is gonna be awful, God bless America. Anyways, after the world's slowest pit stop that is considered fast in the movie, he restarts third. All he needs to do is finish in that position to win the Winston Cup. What's jarring, as a future viewer, is that Ned Jarrett and Benny Parsons keep calling him Dale Jr. in 1997. I feel like that name will never be used in NASCAR, just saying. Anyways, after the world's most chopped up edited crash, old Junebug is brought out of his car with an injury. The early crux of the film is the fact that DJ might not be able to race. So the team, which is a family, has a push and pull battle with Reverend Randy Travis on whether modern medicine or the Lord will be the healing power of their family driver. Now, something that goes on throughout the film is awful acting, nearly as bad as the writing. Though they have a NASCAR exec's wet dream of having Talladega Super Speedway be a winner-take-all finale for the championship. But what you need to understand is that this isn't a NASCAR movie. This is a movie that has racing in it. To start with, there's just random, standalone, weird-ass montages. They just pop up, kind of like songs pop up in a musical. Around those, there's a story. The family doesn't trust DJ's younger brother, Brett, as he's been reckless or something. I, I don't really know. I stopped caring. But they have a disagreement on whether Brett or his dad should qualify the 
championship winning car that they want DJ to race at Talladega. So I shit you not, in order to settle old Pops and Brett's family drama, they literally race on a short track with the Richard Petty driving experience. They show a few clips and then Brett wins. The family issues are all resolved all of a sudden. Years of turmoil with old daddy is gone. And then the brothers are now up in each other's grills and all upset. And then all of a sudden we're at Talladega getting all the cameos. Different chassis setup, different aerodynamics. The car only has to run at peak performance for one lap. Well, Rusty, DJ's looking pretty good. You know, I might need a ride in that little Learjet of yours up to the awards bank with New York. What do you think? Just throw me in a luggage compartment. Well, huh? since we didn't win the championship, we don't have a chance. Uh, I'll take you up there. All right, buddy. I'll give you a call, all right? Yeah, I will. Okay. Thanks a lot. See you later. Hey, DJ, what's going on? How much? How you running today, son? We're running real good, man. They got this thing dialed in. How's the shoulder? Well, that takes on three times a minute. I'm ready to come Sunday. Well, we all hope so, except for maybe Walt. Hey, make sure you tell Brad, you know, run low going into three because it's pretty rough up high. I appreciate that. Hey, say hey to Brooke for me. Brooke. <laughs> that won't age poorly. Nope. Anyways, now there's a subplot of DJ going to his rival's team, betraying the family. It really isn't all that big because the characters are too busy trying to get some. Seriously, all of the main characters in this movie are so damn horny and they're trying to hook up with anyone with a pulse. It seriously takes over most of the movie. Brett's so down bad, he starts fights over a chick he met literally like a day ago. And, well... Pretty much anyone that you see in a scene that's a man and a woman together is trying in some way to get with each other. Me so horny. But hey, after all that, just brush it all aside because it's race day. And then we get more cameos from Mark Martin and Brooke Gordon. Seriously, what is their fixation with Brooke Gordon? Hey, look, it's a baby Chase Elliott. And it's time for racing at Talladega, too. Through choppy editing, DJ gets his number 20 Hardy's Ford up through the pack. It looks like he's going great, and then they literally say that it took him over 100 laps at Talladega to go from 42nd to 22nd. Impressive. And they treat this as an accomplishment. After avoiding an accident, though, they have to pit. And they have an entire conversation with the driver and crew chief on pit road on why there does or doesn't need to be a driver change. It's riveting crap. But it's clear that DJ can't steer. Due to his injury, he literally is not being able to make any corner, and everyone else is debating on whether or not he needs to get pulled out. With less than 10 minutes left in the movie, they finally drag DJ's ass out of the car and get Brett in there. The swap goes well, and the movie goes into a cheesy, copyrighted montage I can't show you, where Brett heroically goes from 30th-ish to 12 in a flash. With eight minutes left in the movie, they trick the competition into pitting, because giving the competition fresher tires and more than likely having to pit later is a trick. Okay? Now all of a sudden, though, it's a fuel mileage race. They seriously try to make the case that a NASCAR stock car can go about half of a Talladega race on a tank of fuel. Listen, I've been watching for decades. That doesn't happen. And now his rival suddenly has made up an entire lap against him in a restrictor plate era Talladega race to challenge for the win in the championship. And the rival's name is Walton. It really doesn't matter. He doesn't play that big of a role in this movie. But Walton tries to chick hicks him. But it doesn't matter. He spins out with five minutes left in the movie and wins the family championship. The movie ends off with the two brothers talking with each other for 30 seconds by a pond and then them coming together as brothers and family. They all cheer. Not much in the line of plot has ever been resolved. And Granny talks to herself because she's probably getting dementia in the background. And with it, we all lose for having to watch this crap. Good God. Now, with that, I'm going to pass it on to you. Have you ever seen Steel Chariots? For your sake, I hope not. But if so, let me know down in the comments below how much you laughed at it or if you even got drunk watching it because it was so stupid. If not, what's the worst racing movie you've ever watched? Well, while you tell me, be sure to leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. Thank you to all my channel members for your continued support, and until next time, have a good one.